Before we start off talking about coding and building awesome stuff, we want to cater to the humanity side with a short grammar lesson. How many of you, by show of hands, know what a homonym is? For those of you who don't know, a homonym is basically a word with two different meanings. Homonyms can include words like iron, which can mean the 26th element on the periodic table, or it can mean to smooth out clothes and take out wrinkles. There are plenty more homonyms that are deep-rooted in the English language, but today we want to talk about a word that you probably haven't thought of as a homonym before. That word is hacker. As you may be thinking now, a hacker is typically defined as someone who uses a computer to gain access to private information. Well, today, I want you all to delete that definition of the word. Instead, replace it with the definition shown around me. Someone who likes to build cool stuff. <laughs> but what's the use of changing its definition? The media is still going to portray a hacker as someone who wears a ski mask and hoodie while in front of a computer, <laughs> and I'm still going to be accused of trying to break into the government while I edit some of the code in our app in public. Well, changing the definition can actually do a lot. Take, for example, Silicon Valley. Back in the 1980s, a subgroup of computer programmers called hackers emerged from the IT industry in the area. These hackers had one goal in mind to push the limits of what was possible with technology of their time. An example of an early hack they made was adding internet capabilities to vending machines. So that a request for a candy bar can be sent from a computer, be processed by the vending machine, and be ready for pickup without the need for a cash transaction. And since then, the hacking culture has changed Silicon Valley. It's now known as the technology center of the United States, home to numerous startups and incubators which all further advance the hacking culture. But some of you may be thinking, can San Antonio come close to embracing the hacker culture? The answer is yes. The resources are there. We have startup spaces, we have incubators, and we have a booming IT industry. Our only issue is that we tend to do something only if it's useful for a job. We need to adopt the idea that, in order to become like, or even better than Silicon Valley, we must adopt a culture of creativity and innovation. But where in our busy lives can we find the opportunities to think outside the box? We have work, responsibilities, and numerous other commitments we just cannot abandon. This is where our solution comes in. This past summer, Josh and I hosted a 36-hour coding marathon called a Hackathon right here in San Antonio to get the youth of the community interested in the power of computer science. Over two days, high schoolers from across San Antonio and the nation were given the skills resources, and tools necessary to create websites, applications, and even hardware hacks. For some, it was a huge challenge. But eventually, with enough hard work and perseverance, it turned into a great success. Take, for example, Ashley. She came to our hackathon this past summer. She had no programming experience, nor had taken any classes in computer science, but she had one goal in mind, to build an iPhone game. After the first day at the hackathon, she was disheartened and honestly a bit scared of the world of programming. So we decided to pair her up with a mentor. And with the aid of that mentor, she created an iPhone game in just a few hours. A game where the main character has to avoid falling ninja stars to get a high score. Even I was hooked. From nothing, she created something she never thought she could. She became a hacker. With the skills and resources necessary to create, Ashley went from knowing nothing to creating an iPhone application, something even very few adults can do. And guess what? This hackathon model is now taking the nation by storm, taking place in huge universities such as the University of Michigan, or even the government with the White House hackathon. And they're no longer limited to just programming. They're now hackathons specifically for creating logos, baking cakes, writing books, and so much more. So why don't we all take the hackathon model and make ourselves become hackers in just five simple steps. Step one, find your passion. What are you passionate about building? Step two, set aside a certain amount of time so you can work on your project. Step three, surround yourself with people who are just as passionate as you are about building what you want to build. Step four, look, gather the resources so that you can create the project that you always wanted to do. Five, hack it. Build the project you always wanted to hack on. Congratulations. You're now a hacker. You might be thinking, wow, this is incredibly simple, and that's because it is. Your product doesn't have to be the next GroupMe, Facebook like button, or Google instant search. 
It can be a complete failure. All that matters is that you took the time and put it towards creating something that you felt needed to be done. So people of TEDx are giving you a challenge. Over the past few hours, you've heard about some amazing things that people are doing. Take inspiration from that. You just have to create something. It doesn't matter how simple or how complicated it is. You'll be contributing to a new culture, a time when it's okay to think outside the box and do something for fun. Now, I challenge you to tap into your inner creator, thinker, and innovator and become a hacker for good. Thank you. <laughs>